God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. All the time. God is good. I want to welcome you here tonight to Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church. The word of God makes you and I a promise. Blessed are they that come hungry and thirsty after righteousness. They shall be filled. filled. So we pray tonight that you came to get turned up, ready to get it filled up. Amen. How many of you are ready to hear something from the Lord? Amen. There you go. When other people not put up two hands, that's good. <laughs> Amen. So we want to go to the Lord in prayer. I want to write down your prayer request tonight. Uh, if you guys have it. Jimmy wants us to uh, have prayer for her. I'm going to tell my side of life that you know. You've got to stop feeding her whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. I know she's the one that takes it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Any other requests? Be praying for Sylvia and my buddy Eugene. Yes, and Daddy and Samantha. And little Willie. <coughs> and Samantha had a, had a operation. Well, yeah. Samantha? Yeah, I talked to her last night. She's doing all right. She said she's in pain, but. Well, you know, thyroid, thyroid, and some retinol. Yeah. I pray for all my family and this. Salvation is here. Lift up Daniel and his family. Lift up my sister and her family, my brother and his family. Amen. Amen. This uh, gentleman at work, he had his cataract, had a cataract taken off Monday. And he, he doing, he's doing good. He's back to work. Uh, he's supposed to go back again another two weeks for the other eye. Or the first of November. So his name is uh, Maestro. I call him Maestro. His, his name is Marty. <clears throat> we keep him in prayer. Remember, Roger, he's having to wear a heart monitor for two weeks, and, and I'll go back Monday and have my other eye surgery. <coughs> you tell me Monday, right? <clears throat> Still want to keep this gentleman at work. Also, Jeff, when it had the knee replacement, uh, keep him in your prayers, too. Any other requests? Sharon's dad. Is he any better? Yeah, about the same. Okay. How many of you know we serve God who can? Amen. God can do anything he wants to do. We don't serve a God who can't. We've got a God who can. Amen. So <clears throat> that's really not my sermon tonight, but the Lord gave me that just a little bit ago to a God who can. So we, uh, when God gives you something like that, it might be for somebody else too. So I just want to make sure I share that. Uh, so to encourage you tonight, whatever you're going through, that we serve a God who can. Amen. Amen. Keep Dad on my Dad on our prayer list, and maybe. Some of you, uh, maybe you miss Bonnie and tell him, you know, see how good you deal with your cataract and he'll, he won't be scared to get his done. <laughs> you know, Dad lives by himself, so he don't really want to do any, you know, have any cataract things done. He's sort of scared, I think. He hadn't said that, but so let's keep him in prayer too. <clears throat> Perhaps just uplifted hand. We, sometimes we always have something we forget and we think about later. But the Lord knows we want to we want to stand in for all of our friends and family in our church. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's lift the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this night, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be coming to your house, Lord God, and to uh, to to just have fellowship one with another and to to just be in your presence. Lord, as David said, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in that way everlasting. Lord, tonight we ask that you create within us a clean heart. Lord, we know as we walk through this world that we, uh, we sometimes we, we just 
neglect to do the things that we ought to do. And Lord, we stand in your presence to ask God to forgive us, strengthen us, help us in our weakness to make us strong, to not to not fall, Lord Jesus, but to stand strong and to do what you would have us to do. Lord, we lift up these prayer requests tonight, Lord, as we want to make sure that we call the names out, Lord, and uh, that as we as a church, we lift them up. Father, we lift up Judy tonight, Lord, you know her situation with her stomach. And uh, Father God, it's been going on a little while. I ask you, Lord, you just touch her body. Ease off the nausea and the, the, the way it moves, Lord, that, that her digestive system will work the way it's supposed to work. <clears throat> Lord, we lift up Sylvia tonight, Lord, that you continue to touch her back. Help her, Lord, in her aches and pains. Thank you, Lord, for her being able to be here tonight and pushing through. Lord God, even uh, even with aches and pains, want to come and hear the word of God. Lord, we lift up Eugene, Lord Jesus, you continue to touch his body and his heart, his lungs. Help him be the man of God you want him to be. Lord, you know his desire to get closer to you and to be the, the man of God you want him to be. Lord, I lift him up before you, Lord Jesus, that you just <coughs> touch him tonight to draw him closer to you. Lord God, I lift up Danny, Father God, in his help. Lord, spiritually and physically, Lord, that you touch his body. Help him, Lord Jesus, to be what uh, you'd have him to be, Lord. I pray, Father, for Samantha, that you touch her body to have a speedy recovery from her surgery. Lord Jesus, that, that we pray that what the doctors did would take care of all of this thyroid issue that she uh, was experiencing. And I pray, Father God, that she can find herself in complete health, Lord. Lord, I lift up Willie Jr. before you, Lord. You know uh, his needs spiritually and physically and financially. I ask you, God, to touch him. Help him, Lord Jesus, to uh, have faith in you. And as we all have faith in you, we know everything's going to be okay. Lord, I lift up my wife's request of her friends and family in Texas and Mexico, Lord, that you touch them. Help them, Father, to uh, know you as their personal Savior. The ones that's going through difficult times, we lift them up for her nephew Alex that cut his finger. I pray, Father God, you help him have a speedy recovery. Lord Jesus, I lift up Daniel and his family, uh, Sharice and Kelsey. Uh, uh, Lord, that you touch them and help them, Father God, to to be uh, a joyful family, one that, Lord, that, that can just find righteousness, peace, and joy, fill their home up. Lord, continue to touch Daniel in his uh, aches and pains for have a, his recovery for his hand as well as his need, Lord. I pray, Father, you give those doctors the wisdom they they need to do the proper things. Lord, we lift up Marty uh, with his cataract surgery, that, uh, that he'll continue to have a speedy recovery. And Lord, uh, I pray, Father, that you'll help me be an example in front of these men at work to uh, perhaps they know you as their personal savior, Lord. Help this time of fellowship that we have together to draw them from the lift up Roger and the heart monitor, Lord, and the other things that he, he may be experiencing. I lift them up before you, God, because you know what our body needs before we need it. Know it, Lord. And I ask you, God, to just, uh, as he and Bonnie, as Bonnie lifts her up, Father, as she's coming up on her second uh, cataract surgery, we thank you, Lord, that you give doctors the wisdom to, to help us as our bodies get older and our eyes change and bodies change, and you give doctors wisdom to be able to help give us uh, more time and help give us better vision. I ask you, God, to, uh, that when she goes through this next one, she'll have another good result with a speedy recovery, Lord. Let it be no itching or discomfort. I pray, Father God, that everything will bring honor and glory to your name. Lord Jesus, I lift up JD before you, Lord. You know, <clears throat> you know what the, the different situations that he's going through from his heart to. Uh, the other things bothering him in his mind, I ask you, God, to help him tonight. Lord Jesus, to give the doctors the wisdom to help give them the understanding of, of what's going on with him. I ask you, Lord, to strengthen him to, to be the man of God you want him to be. I lift up Patsy, Lord, before you that you would <clears throat> continue to touch her. Father God, to help her, Father God, in this time. Lord Jesus, to continue to go through the battles that she goes through, but to come out victorious. Lord, I lift up my dad before you, Lord. I thank you for the many years you've given him to us, Lord. And I ask you, God, to continue to give him help and strength. I pray, Lord, that you give him the, the courage, Father God, to be able to get his, uh, his eyes worked on. Father God, that he can uh, find more joy in life as he can see better. 
Lord, I lift up Miss Doris before you, Lord. That, uh, I know she would like to, to be here in the house of God. And, Lord, we know, Lord, it's just difficult to get out at night at times. And I ask you, God, to help her, Father God, in this time as well. Lord Jesus, for, for all the ones that are here tonight, I lift them up before you, Lord. I ask you, God, that you give us an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to understand. We pray, Father God, that as as we took time of our schedule, Lord, that that we made the effort to be here. Lord, that, that's really nothing at all, Lord, but we, we thank you that you are here with us. We invite you to take charge. Help us, Lord, in this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you would, give the Lord praise one more time. God is a good God and worthy of all praise. If you'd open your Bibles to the book of Colossians chapter 3, uh, I wanted to share this. I know that I often go through a scripture like this, and, uh, and I some things I repeat uh, quite often because it's so, all of God's Word sort of fits together. And then it's, it's the, the subject comes up sometimes is, why God gave us the Word of God? Why did we? Uh, why did He even give us the written Word of God? And can we? Do we believe that the English version? This came up in school this week. Is do we believe that the English version is really still the inspired Word of God, or was it just what God, what man wrote down from an idea that they got from God? And. Uh, of course, as you know me, I may not have got the answer correct, but I don't care if it's English, Spanish, or what language is it. The, uh, when it was translated, I believe God knew the language it was going to be translated to. And uh, and the, when God spoke to, because each writer in the Bible, they have their own character. You know, they have their own style of writing. And God knew those people, and they knew their he knew that Peter was a fisherman. He knew that Paul was a tent maker. And he knew that uh, Matthew was a, a tax collector. You know, he knew all these things as he gave them the word of God to write down. And not all of, all of them were going to write the same. And so God knew all that. And so, so, of course, I said, I believe God, did, not only did he give them the idea, but he, you know, every word the, the A's, the B's, the C's, and the D's. You know, everything that was written in there was inspired by God. And it has a reason. Now, whenever you read your Bible that's translated into English, you may see some italics words. And when you study that, that really means that they they put that word in there, the, that that wasn't the original manuscript, but that italics word was put it in to sort of fit the sentence together. And so you have to understand that, that the Bible gives you that information in English that when it's in a talent's word, that that's, that wasn't the original, original manuscript. But it's almost like when you try to speak a different language, Spanish, for example, is that when you're trying to say one sentence, you may not say it exactly the way you would say it in, in English. You know, if I'm saying it, I've got a red car, uh, then I would almost say I have a car red when I say it in Spanish, un carro rojo. So, so you'd say it sort of reversed, but you have to realize, but that's when we study the Word of God. That's why we understand the Word of God. And the, it's so strange. I'm glad we've got some young people. Je Keith Jeffrey, he didn't finish his homework. He had to stay home and finish his homework. But, Kids, we need to teach them how to read the Bible and how to, if, if we give them scripture, like if, all of you, if I give you some scripture and I wrote it down and I use uh, Matthew 6, colon 33, what would that mean? Go ahead, somebody. Matthew 6, colon 33. Chapter, chapter 6, verse 33. Because you've been in the house of God, you sort of know that when you read. And believe it or not, I, there's young people, 20s, that, that don't know that. 
You know, they don't go, I wrote scripture down, like, what does that mean? And, uh, and I mean, when you read your regular Bible, it doesn't write it out like that. So how do we learn that? We learn that one thing is written like that in our Sunday school courtlies, you know, in different things that you read, but it's, it's so important that it's almost like being able to tell time using an analog clock, you know, is this, I seen a, a thing on Facebook, probably one of these little things that the girl didn't know how to tell time using a regular clock, you know, y'all always used to digital, you know? And uh, so, you know, there's so many things that uh, it's good that the, we make sure our young people know these things. <clears throat> In Matthew, uh, nah, I've got Matthew 632 on my brain a lot. <laughs> Seek you first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these things be added unto you. But in Colossians chapter 3, I want to read verse 1. I want to read uh, uh, down for a little while, and, and I'll probably stop at verse 17. <clears throat> and that's something that inspires me to keep going. But I, I want to go that far and point out a few things tonight. Uh, and it's it's always good to be in the Lord's house. God doesn't make a mistake. Amen. Amen. And so it's not a mistake by me reading this. And so sometimes, well, how does that apply to me? You look deep enough when we read the word of God, you can find how it applies to whatever you need in your life. Amen. Amen. That's what's so great about God being a living God and having a living word. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Now, I'm reading, of course, this is the King James Version. I always... I've been in the King James Version all my life. Uh, the younger generation may not really catch some of this, but I've always stuck with it, so I don't really have a problem reading uh, reading the King James Version. But mortify is putting to death. It don't mean to actually kill members. You know, like that finger. That's a member. That's a member of my body. You know, this arm is a member of my body. But these these members that it's talking about here are or uh, like desires is what they're talking about. So mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil consequence, uh, and covetousness, which, are, which is idolatry. Uh, fornication is, is unclean living. Amen. They, some people may, if I could put it bluntly, if you've got a family just shacking up, a man and woman just shacking up, not married, that's old term. You know, now, now time they, they're just testing the waters, living together. They're roommates, whatever you want to, you know, they, they pacify it, but really what it means is fornication. I mean, you can call it and try to dance around it all you want to, but sin is still going to be sin. Amen. Inordinate of uncleanness, that's obvious. So that could be your deep, evil thoughts. Unclean thinking. Inordinate mm -hmm. affection, that's homosexuality. Amen. Uh, in five evil consequences, I can't say a word. Can someone, as, as evil desires. And covetousness, it's almost like being evil. Trying to have everything for yourself. Being greedy. I want it all. And then which is idolatry. You uh, mean I want. I, I got to have that. So you, you created something to be an idol. For which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now this is important for us to read some of this. Because it's sort of like the story of Job. They thought Job had sinned because all this health problems came against him. Amen. And we know as we read the word of God that it's possible because it reads it right here. 
that if you if you live this way, you can have what how does it work? I want to say it the way the word of God said it. Uh for which things say the wrath of God comes. When the wrath of God comes against you, wrath could be uh, his anger, his his when he was going to correct you. Um uh, I know when my mom when the wrath of mom came after me, you know, it didn't matter what she had in her hand, you was gonna feel it. You know, telephone, phone book, flash water, switch, you know, whatever she had. But the wrath of God, you know, you could look at it, it could be it could be anything that will get your attention. And hopefully, uh, it doesn't have to be something as severe as a as a bad doctor's report or a bad car accident or or something like that. Amen. But that's why we have to tune in and, and have a, a sensitive, godly ear. We're meant to be obedient. So whenever he tells us something, that we can we can repent of it or we can turn and do the right thing immediately because my wife, whenever he, she calls Jeffrey for supper, Jeffrey is ready. If he doesn't come, she gets louder. <laughs> and, and I thought I could I thought I could be loud. You know, but it, but it gets louder. But you know, so so getting uh but God will get louder, but when God gets louder, you don't want to be part of that. See, we want to be and stay at the part where God speaks to us in the still small voice. If you can hear God in the still small voice, you're paying attention. Amen. <clears throat> in which he also walked sometime. Let me let me back up to verse six again. For which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, in which he also walked sometime when he lived in them. So we've all we've all had sin in our life. But now ye also put off all these. Now I wanted to focus on, and I'd like you to underline that if you if you don't mind writing in your Bible, underline that put off. It says you got to get rid of these things. These other things were things that are like in society, but put off these things up yourself. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You know, we, we look at the, the filthy communication, uh, some people and they just had a certain way of talking. They didn't consider it certain words as a cuss word, but you say some words at home, you don't think nothing about it, but you do go into society, then, you know, you might get some strange looks. And then old timers, you know, they have their, had their own language, old farmer guys, they might have a certain way of language. But the, when we look at filthy communication, it's talking about having dirty speech. Perhaps telling nasty jokes. You know, talking things you don't need to be talking about. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. In verse, in verse 9, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man and his deeds. Again, I want you to underline that put off. Uh, How many of you realize it's easier to take your clothes off than it is to put them on? You know, it's, uh, I'll, I'll get into more of that in just a minute. And I put on the new man. Now, is we know that salvation is, is by faith and through grace, right? But there's some effort you've got to put in to your relationship with God. You put some things off. That means you have to willingly turn away from sin. Right? We talked about it the other week, uh, Sunday, about repenting. you got to turn away from that. You've got to make some effort in your life for yourself. Sunday sermon, sometimes you got to fight. you got to be willing in, in, to turn away, repent, turn the other way. But then you got to be willing to put something on. you got to be able to put on the new man. You might not want, know exactly what to put on. I asked my wife today, what do you want me to wear? She didn't tell me, I, so if I don't match, it's my fault. But she says, I said, because a lot of times I told her, didn't you just wear that? And she said that again, didn't you just wear that Sunday? I said, no, I wore a suit Sunday. So this isn't saying, I wore brown, but it wasn't this 
Right. right. <laughs> but we, we look at this as that putting on, it, it takes effort. Putting off also takes effort. you got to do something. But it's a whole lot easier to drop it off than it is to put something on. But if you know what you're going to put on, Sunday mornings, do you guys always know what you, ladies, do you always know what you're going to wear Sunday morning? But Before Sunday morning. Before Sunday morning? Yeah. Now, many of you have said something about, some, most of the time me and Irene are match. That means I can't get dressed until she gets dressed. Right? <laughs> because if she hadn't already thought about what she's going to put on, and then I go and select me something, she says, that's not what, that's not the color I'm wearing today. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take it back off and wave it. Okay, what you going to wear? You know? And I, 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 we like to match. You know, we like to, uh, but you, you got to put some effort. Sometimes you got to take some thought into it. Now, spiritually thinking is, thinking about the type of man or woman of God you want to be. If you just want to go through life and not care, you know, but do you want to be, do you want to make a difference in this world? Do you want to make a difference in your family? Do you want people to see you and say, that person's got something I want. I want to talk to them. Not that you got a, a big wallet or a fancy car. But you got a glow about you. You got a, a confidence. You got a, a an assurance about you that people want to talk to you and say, "Hey, what is what's so special about you? There's something there's something unique about you." Amen. So you got to know what you, God already has a plan, and He knows what He wants you to be. And the desire, if you would think about it long enough. And you delight yourself in him, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. You're going to start thinking the godly way. And you're going to say, Lord, this is the man. I, I remember I would have never thought that I was going to preach. you know. And then as time went on, when I wanted to be a preacher, I thought, why am I a preacher? Being a preacher, everybody's looking at you. You know, <laughs> you, if you mess up, then it's held against you all the time. It's one thing once you once you repent and you get things right. But then if you mess up again, which we all know we all have to repent from time to time. But see, like this, I look at you, you guys are all looking at me. And you only got two eyes looking at you, but look at all the eyes looking at me, right? <laughs> but it's the same, it, but you think of this as that, it's, it's, it's not always, sometimes this is the hot seat. <laughs> we was joking, but... My wife said, Jeffrey, do you want to stay home and finish your homework? I said, yes. I said, can I stay home too? You know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we, we look at this as that you've got this, Lord, I want to be the man you want me to be. But if it was, I told you, whenever you guys talk to me, I, I can't say that I really wanted, I, I'd love to preach. But I said, I can't say that I, I really want to pastor. Because it's such great and strong responsibility that it's stressful. Because I don't want to, I don't have to live just to make sure that my life is right. I have to live to make sure because I'm held responsible for the, the food that I give you. I don't want to make a meal to upset your stomach, you know, or, or, or turn you the wrong way, or make you start thinking that, well, that's not what God said in the Bible, so I don't have to read that. So I don't want to be that type of preacher that's getting you to look at all the other churches to compare yourself to. Just compare yourself. We'll compare ourselves to Pleasant Grove Western Church. And I'll compare and measure myself up between me and Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if I don't measure up, then that means i got to make some changes. I might measure up pretty good, uh, or Junior might measure up pretty good if he compares himself to me. Or if I compare myself to him. But if we compare ourselves to Jesus, we'll realize that we're nothing but unrighteousness. And our, unrighte our righteousness is like filthy rags when we compare, it to, compare ourselves to Jesus. But, but how do we fix that? Through the word of God. Amen? Let me, uh, let me go on a little bit. We're almost finished. Forbearing one another. I want to read this part again in 13. Did I get to that part? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lie not, lie not. That was the last thing. Yep. And put on the new man. I'm going to read this again. 
and in the renew which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Amen. You're in the image of Jesus. You're, you're created by the Lord. Amen. Ultimately, you, you had a mom and dad. You, the only other two people that was created, one person created out of dirt, the other one was out of a rib, and the rest of us came from them. No. Amen. How it all worked out, I don't have the answer, so don't ask me that one again. Amen. But I accept <laughs> it with faith. Amen. No one else was around and no one else is still here that could give you that answer except the Lord says, I wrote it in the word of God, you accept it with faith. And that's what we do. We live by the word of God and we live by faith. And in verse 11 it says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Every person, red, yellow, black, and white, God wants them all to know him as personal Savior. Even between Israel and uh, Palestine and all these other, and uh, Hamas, ultimately it's God's will that everybody repent and turn to Jesus Christ. Amen? But people just don't want to, they, they like the war, they like the strife, they don't want to let go and put off some of these things that we've already mentioned here tonight. But when we see this, that but Christ is all and in all. Now, we've got to look at this and understand that if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he's not in you. Amen? You've got to be in him for him to be in you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Amen? Old things are all passed away, all things become new. We have to realize that we've got to be in him. We've got to call upon him. And we ask him into, Lord, I confess my sins. Amen. I believe in my heart. And when you believe in your heart, and you've confessed with your mouth, then the Bible says, as you read the whole word of God, you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. Amen. Mm -hmm. You have to remind yourself of that. You have to remind yourself, you can be on the top of your game, the number one Christian follower of Jesus Christ and if you lose focus through the day you'll find yourself thinking what you shouldn't be thinking and it doesn't have to be something evil but you could start having a bad attitude real quick somebody uh, cut you off you think something bad because that's naturally what the body the mind wants to do amen so this is in number 12 I want you to underline this put on put on therefore as the elect of God now, I work, I, as I was studying this, I'm looking at, okay, the elect, we're thinking of elections coming up uh, in November. E elections, elect, you've been chosen by God. Many are called, but few are chosen. Amen? You've been, God selected you, he elected you, he, he wanted you, he touched your heart, but you, you said, you yielded. You heard the Spirit of God call when he said, how, how, how do I want to say this? Because the Scripture says, the way the Word of God says, you don't just come to God when you want to unless the Spirit draws. The Spirit's got to draw you. So people are thinking, well, I'll get saved when I get older. Well, I'll get saved after high school. I'll get saved after college, after I lived it up, after I had my party life. You get saved when the Holy Spirit draws you. Don't wait. Because you're not, you're not sure if you'll make it through high school. If God is calling you now, you turn to him now. And then he then it sets, it sets that new pathway. Amen. You can't get on the straight and narrow until you're on the straight and narrow. Does that make sense? That means you can't get on the pathway of the kingdom of God until you get on that pathway. And once you get on that pathway to stay on it, you just stay faithful in the word of God. You just stay prayerful. Keep having a desire to follow after him. Amen. But put on, therefore, the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. 
Let me back up. If any man have a quarrel against any, now that's just not uh, your friends. That's the people that really done something bad to you or done something bad to your family. Now that'd be hard. It'd be hard if I thought about if I had a daughter and was raped, that was raped. It'd be hard for me to, uh, to forgive something like that. But the Bible says I have to. Amen. The Bible tells me I'd have to do that. So I'd have to dig deep to say, Lord, I need help in this. And families and uh, families, there's a lot of families that have been through things like this that it's hard to minister to them. Say, hey, you got to forgive. Because see, that unforgiveness not only hinders you in your spiritual growth. Amen. It could cause you to go to hell. Amen. You got you got to make sure that not only go hell on this through, on, through things in this earth, but going to the literal place of fire where the worm never dies. Amen? And so we, we got to make sure that we're able to forgive everyone that's offended us. And whenever you forgive them, sometimes, and, I, and I'm not going to do it right now, I have to meditate and say, Lord, is it some people that I've encountered in my life that I've not forgiven? Because it, it, it might be that I, that I didn't really think about it. You just said, Lord, I forgive everybody that transgressed against me. But deep down in your spirit, listen to this, deep down, it may be something that you're holding on to that you didn't even realize. That's why whenever I talk to you about praying, don't just pray, Lord, bless me. What are you asking God to bless you with? Mm -hmm. You know, what are you, what are you wanting from God? Because God has, has, will touch and bless you in so many mm -hmm. ways that when you actually are specific with what you ask, and then he answers, he's like, wow. He gave me a, I, I look at my job, and some, how many ever get frustrated with their work? Some of, most of you are tired. I look on this side. <laughs> <laughs> so you get frustrated with work, but there's a lot of people don't even have a job. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm looking at, I'm looking at, Sometimes I get frustrated at work, but I only have to drive, drive less than 10 miles to go to work. Right? It's like, man, I've got, I got it made, really. You know, but so I'm like, Lord, I'm, I've been blessed. You know, I didn't go to work two weeks on a tank of gas. Let me keep on. I'm almost finished with what I wanted to cover tonight. <clears throat> In verse 14, and above all these things, put on, again, there's put on. Now, that's in the talus, <clears throat> which means because it was saying put on in other places, the writer, when they translated it into English, they knew it, that you still had to put on charity. You got to make an effort to love other people. I can like them, but I don't know if I can love them. Have you ever felt like that? I can like, but it says put on charity. That's love, uh, which is the bond of perfectness. And how can we be perfect? There's only been one perfect. There's only one, and that's, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But God looks at when he sees Jesus in you, you're made perfect. When he sees the love of God on you and in you, you're made perfect. He sees you as perfect. You know, you, you, uh, might make mistakes. But if your heart's desire is to live for the Lord, God sees you perfect. And then you ask God to, the same story about the foot washing. You know, we have to get cleaned up a little bit every now and then. But I'm always careful. <clears throat> do I believe in eternal security? I do. Do I believe once saved, always saved? No. Amen. Because I, I believe that I can have eternal security, but I can have a choice if I, I want to live for the Lord if I don't want to live for the Lord. Same way with marriage and divorce. I can say I don't want to be married and, and we get divorced. Amen? But we, in Jesus' name, I cover that and erase that. But we want to see that you have a choice. You have to put on the right 
renewed mind to be the man and woman of God that God wants you to be. And when you, by coming into God's house here tonight, it shows that I want to be a better person. As a young person, I didn't understand all this. Perhaps uh, Kaylee and, and Victoria and Jeffrey, they don't really grasp uh, all this yet. But whenever they become, get in their, their 20s, then you know, they, they're going to start becoming adults and having to do their own thing. They're going to start thinking, then they're going to start feeling this guidance of the Holy Spirit. Right now, they got the guidance of mom and dad, right? You're going to do this and you're going to do that. <clears throat> With a few choices that they can make mistakes, but we don't, we're not giving them enough choices that they can make that bad of a mistake. But whenever they get on their own, they can, they're free to make those choices. But hopefully we raise them up, then whenever they're going to feel the guidance of the Holy Spirit, they're going to know what the parents have taught them along the way. And then if they, my dad, he tried to tell me a lot of things, and I still did things my way because I had to experience it myself. Some of you, and probably most men, were the same. And then your dad's trying to tell you not to do something because they've already done it and learned from it. But it's like, yeah, but that won't be me. And of course, it was me, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to learn it my, my own self. But we pray that our children don't have to go through it that way. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And this is where we're, we're at church is that a Christian should not, they should all experience peace. They should have righteousness, peace, and joy in their hearts. So if, there, if you find that you're a Christian, but you're, you don't have peace, you have a troubled soul, there's something wrong. Amen. I don't want to sound like, hey, you got sin in your life. You have to evaluate that. Perhaps you got unforgiveness. Perhaps there's something that's not measuring up according to the word of God. But we know that there should be peace and let the peace of God. You got to let the, God, the peace of God. You got to put an effort to put on the armor of God, like we talked about Sunday. You got to put an effort to, to put on the, the, the new man. Put on these the good attributes that God wants you to put on. And you got to allow the peace of God. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. To the which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Now Paul, as he's writing all this down, and he's, he's telling us now, I don't know if Paul actually wrote this or somebody's writing for him. Because there's some letters people wrote, he transcribed for him. Amen. But we, we're looking at this as, so I'm saying Paul wrote it because it's a letter from Paul. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Is the word of Christ, does that mean just the New Testament? Does that mean just the letters in red? It's all of them. It's the whole word of God. So that's when we look at this word, the word of Christ, when it says Christ, he's the Messiah. Right? He's Emmanuel, God with us. So that, that tells us the whole word of God. Let all the word of God. Now, they didn't even have the whole word of God. They're still putting together the New Testament manuscripts. You know, they're still, still getting everything written together here. But let the word of God dwell in you richly, not just a little bit, but overflowing. You know, not, don't just fill it up, but let it overflow. Dwell in you richly, lest the word of God. That means you've got to spend some time in reading and time in study. Amen? Richly in all wisdom. Wisdom is how to apply. We've talked about that before. you got knowledge. Wisdom is how you apply the knowledge. You can have book sense, but if you don't have practical, right? That means if you don't have hands-on, we've got some chemical engineers that they had, a, uh, they had school, but they hadn't had any experience. So when they hired them, they were able to pay them this much money. You know, they got a, a chemical engineering degree. But without experience, they, they, can, they only get that much pay. So it goes like that. You, you can, but so that's why you got to have the wisdom of how to apply that knowledge. You and I, get we get wisdom every day if you look at it. If you really acknowledge it, say, okay, I, I messed up, so I get wisdom not to do it that same way next time. I said this the other week as I was talking about 
what works for me in my prayer life. That's why I stick with it. I've told the church, I said, whenever you do, if you pray three times a day, don't start praying two times a day. If praying three times a day is working, if praying three times a day don't work, start praying four times a day. Don't pray less, pray more. Amen. <clears throat> Teaching, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And this is the, the key verse that I'm going to stop at tonight. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Everything what we do, we do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we uh, had Kingdom Worship Ministries, even in our envelopes for giving, I had them write in Jesus' name. You know, I like that. If you guys wanted to implement that, I'm not going to force you to do that. But it's just like, even my giving, I'm going to give in Jesus' name. It didn't really have to be a tithe. It's whatever offering. If it's somebody's giving a dollar, I had envelopes there. The reason we, we like to put everything in the envelope is it was nobody's business what you're giving. You know, yeah, I know we don't have people like that here, but I've been in churches that somebody would throw a hundred out, they stretch that hundred out across the plate. Now I want everybody to see that I put a hundred in there, you know. You know, some of you say, but I've seen that. So people, some yeah. some people want to be, look how much I'm giving, you know. And then you you have the one that all they have is a few mites, one dollar. Or 50 cent or two pennies and they feel like well what what the what matters what I give if he give a hundred all I got is this little bit but we know what God looks at he looks at your heart doesn't he mm. <laughs> now if God put in your heart to give a hundred and you give two cents you better ask for that you know you, you better <laughs> correct that amen but if you give him what you can give uh, the Lord knows your heart. He knows what you're able to give. Amen. Amen. And there's more ways. There's more ways to give to God than through your your money. Amen. I remember earlier in my Christian walk, <clears throat> I didn't have any money. Amen. <laughs> so so I, I had to, Lord, I got to work this thing off. I Trying to be the Sunday school. Everything that was available at the church, I tried to do it. You know, I said, Lord, I got to work something off, out. You know, I got to do something. I feel like I got to contribute somehow. And to the Lord allowed me to, then I allowed my finances to get where they needed to be and <clears throat> was able to learn as you, as you grow. Amen. But there's always, there's, so when God, but when you get the full message of, of how God's going to bless you, so whatever you do in word or deed, that was our key verse because I was going to stick with the, the name of Jesus and I got stuck on all this other just as I was preparing for tonight. Like, well, all this is good. Everything is, is good that we've read tonight. Applying it to yourself. So this is what I started off with. Is it easier to take your stuff off than put it on? You know, my pajamas in the morning, I just drop them off. Most of the time I leave them where they drop, right? My wife would tell you. But when you're putting on your stuff, you got to sit on there. You got to put your socks on. I can't put my socks on the way I used to. You know, it used to be I could stand up and put a sock on. Now I got to sit down, cross my legs, and hold my foot there. And uh, to be able to, to get up. Sometimes I have to help my foot get up and get up in my pants leg. You know, you know, so putting stuff on is a whole lot harder for me than, than to put it on. Right, but the same way as spiritually, it takes effort. If you really want to get those clothes on, you're going to go through what you got to go through to get them on. And the same way as in your relationship with Christ, if you really want to be the man and woman of God that He wants you to be, you're not going to be the lazy Christian. You're not going to be the lazy. Well, Lord, if it's Your will for me to be at church, I'll just show up there. No, you're going to have to get dressed, get in your car. Or walk and get and get yourself to church. You're gonna put forth some effort. Amen. 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 God is a good God. But we're gonna 
we're going to close in prayer. We wanted to share that with you tonight. We pray that uh, you was able to receive something tonight. Be the man and woman of God that God wants you to, to be. Whatever you do, if you're when you're fixing supper, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Taste better. Huh? Taste better. Taste better. Tell Miss Judy that maybe she won't have upset stomach. No, I'm, I'm sort of I'm joking a little bit with that. We I don't put down anybody's stomach viruses and things they're going through. No. Amen. I don't want to put none of that. I know many of you have experienced stomach stuff. Amen. But whatever you do, do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, when you finish, uh, and you might do it, Greg. I know whenever I leave work, if we was able to get something accomplished, Lord, we give you the praise for for getting this job done. Because we we don't really have a knowledge. God gives us the knowledge, and we we talk to. I'll, I'll use I'll I'll use my dad. He's not here. He's forgot more than I'll ever know. <laughs> You know, it, there's some people that's got a, a lifetime of experience that have that we think that we know a lot, but we really don't know anything. God gives us knowledge; He gives an idea of something to uh, troubleshoot, how to remedy a, uh, the bad conqueror, whatever. It is. God gives you an idea; you would have never thought of that unless God was in you to to make those decisions. So giving him the thanks and praise. And God just said, look, he gave me praise for that. I'm making more wise. You know, they're, they're wise with their finances. I'm making them more rich. Amen. Let us go ahead and pray. Amen. Any of you have any prayer requests that came up while we was preaching? Same one. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the reading and hearing of your word tonight. We pray, Lord, that as we go our different ways tonight, that you would uh, bless bless each family here, those that are watched by social media. We pray, Father God, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to fill each home. Father God, help us to put off the things that the Bible talks about tonight and to make the effort to put on the to be the man and woman of God you want us to be. Father God, we pray, Father, for guidance this week, that you would lead us, guide us, direct us, and protect us. We pray for the Holy Spirit. I pray for our young people, Lord, as they go to school, that you'd help them to, to meditate, even to focus on, the, on you, Lord, through the day. Father God, to, to be the godly uh, young lady and the young man that you want them to be. We pray, Father God, that you'd help our church here at Pleasant Grove Western Church to be the church you want us to be. Father God, that we can be witnesses at work, witnesses at the stores, witnesses at the restaurants, wherever we go, Father God, we can be witnesses. Lord God, as we apply this scripture, may we, uh, everything we say and do in word or deed, may it be done in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May you watch over us, keep us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.